Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to respond to an attitude that I just heard explicitly voiced on the internet recently, and I think it's an attitude that a lot of people hold, and I think having someone explicitly voice it gave me some insights. When I heard someone say, people were talking about healthcare, and there was a discussion about whether or not a person wanted to go through with a particular procedure. And someone replied, if your insurance covers it, there's no reason not to go through with this. Like, just do it. And this really bothered me. And like when I, when I heard it voiced, I realized that a lot of other people over the course of my life had voiced similar things like that. This attitude is that if you're thinking about whether or not you want to get a particular medical procedure done, so it could be like taking a drug, it could be going through surgery, it could be something minor like getting a particular medical test, that really all you need to consider is, is it covered by my insurance? And if it's covered, then you're good to go and just go ahead and do it. I think there are two huge problems with this. The one problem is the potential for escalating costs. And the second problem is the potential for harm to come from the procedure. I'm going to talk about the harm aspect first. I think it's a little more straightforward. People sometimes take for granted that uh, the idea that like doctors are kind of taking our best interests in mind, but like doctors can make mistakes, and I think there there can be some systematic biases in our healthcare system. And there are lots of examples of ways in which uh, interventions or procedures or whatever can cause harm. And I want to just throw a few out there. Uh, one of them is unnecessary drugs. Drugs can have side effects. Uh, if you're taking a drug that isn't really necessary, like taking antibiotics, if you have a viral infection, that can contribute to antibiotic resistance, both in yourself and in society as a whole. But like, think about it, if you're just interested in yourself, it's going to increase your risk of later having some sort of bacteria in your system that is resistant to that antibiotic. Uh, antibiotics also kind of disrupt your digestive system. I don't know if you've been through antibiotics. I have. It doesn't always make your digestive system feel great. That's just one example. Something like surgery can have all sorts of major complications. So if it's not absolutely necessary, there can be a lot of downsides to it. I could go on and on and on. That's a whole other topic. I want to now spend most of this video talking about the cost thing, because I think it's something that people don't think about when getting a medical procedure. Like, doctor recommends, oh hey, like, do a test for this, do a test for that, or the doctor is like, take this drug. And like, if your insurance company is paying for that, you might think, oh, this is free. Well, it's not free. Somebody is paying for that. And I want to draw a little bit of attention to how the system works in this country. So a lot of people get health care through their employers, but some people, such as me, have to purchase health care individually because we do not have full-time jobs that provide benefits. So I have to buy health care through, now under the Affordable Care Act, the health care marketplace. So, um, I'm kind of at the mercy of the market. Uh, as healthcare costs go up, the cost of insurance goes up. And I want to I want to talk about how that works. Health uh, insurance companies are trying to make a profit, like any business, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Like I'm a second-time business owner myself. Like I run a business for a living. So like I'm all about business. Business is great. Profit is great. Yeah. So how do these companies make a profit? They have a lot of kind of estimations and calculations that they have to do. They uh, look at how much money they're having to pay out for all the people they're covering, and then they have to continually adjust, like, are we charging enough in our premiums, which might be paid by individuals, it might be paid by employers, and so on, large organizations. Are we charging enough money in premiums to cover the amount that we're paying out? And they adjust that. So like, if people as a whole in society start kind of cashing in on their insurance more, if they start doing more costly procedures that are covered under their insurance, the insurance companies are going to have to pay out more. And in the long run, in order to stay in business, they are going to have to raise the cost of the plans that those people are on. And that cost is paid by someone. Like in my case, 
I have to pay it myself. I am one of the people that has, who's effectively been priced out of the uh, healthcare marketplace. I've seen this, uh, the rates just skyrocket in the past two years. Like, um, anyway, I don't want to go into that in depth. I just want to point out that that happens to people. It also affects people, though, when rates go up for employers. I think, especially in like more liberal subcultures and circles, that it's most of my friends are pretty liberal. I sometimes hear these attitudes of like, oh, like the businesses can always pay, like make the businesses pay, and like I don't like that, like because I run a business and I know how they work, and like when healthcare costs rise for society as a whole, and you have a system where people are mostly getting healthcare through their benefits package of like a full-time job, when those costs go up, that raises the cost of employing people in full-time jobs. And this is exactly what you're seeing in our society. Like, have you noticed that in our society it's kind of hard to get a full-time job? It's much harder to get a full-time job with benefits than a part-time job. There are a lot of organizations out there that employ tons and tons of part-time labor. There's some like retail stores where they just like all the people working there are part-time, and they'll maybe have like one or two managers who are full-time, and that's it. And like, why does this business model exist? I don't think it exists because it's like the free market. I don't think it's beneficial necessarily to the organizations to be run that way. I think the pressure is created by the immense cost of healthcare. And people don't necessarily make this connection in their head. They don't, when they're at the doctor, they're not thinking about the effect of their choices on the structure of the economy. But their choices at the doctor has an effect on the structure of the economy. It has an effect on businesses even staying in business versus going out of business, because as the cost of maintaining employees gets higher and higher, some businesses that are struggling can be put out of business because of that. It hinders job creation, like people in today's society are complaining, like, we need jobs, there are not enough good jobs, there are not enough like stable full-time jobs. Well, why? One of the reasons is that the cost of employing people has become so high because the healthcare costs are so high. And why? Part of it is that attitude I voiced at the beginning of this video, that attitude of like, oh, if my insurance covers it, I might as well get it. Well, that attitude has costs, and the, these things that I've talked about are some of those costs. I feel like I've only scratched the surface here. This can go pretty deep. I want to call us to challenge that attitude and to be mindful of how we use the healthcare system. When I go to the doctor, I kind of drill them, and I can tell from how they respond to me that they're not used to people doing this. I ask them, is this going to cost something? How much is this going to cost? And if they recommend something that is costly, I ask them, is there an alternative? Once I had someone recommend me to get a CAT scan that was not necessary, but they're like, just as a precaution, like, get this CAT scan. And I said, well, is this necessary? And they're like, well, you could get an x-ray, and then if the x-ray shows something, then you could get the CAT scan. Well, for one, that saved me exposure to a lot of radiation. CAT scans expose you to quite a lot of radiation. Um, and it saved me, like, over a thousand dollars. Now, by me, some of that was going to be paid out by my insurance. But, like, if someone else is paying for it, then someone else's deductible is going up. Like, collectively in society, as people are paying for those you know, thousand dollar procedures, everyone's costs go up. I want us to be mindful of this. I think that mindfulness alone of this issue could lower healthcare costs. Like, there's all this political dialogue right now, and it's like, yes, working out the politics and a uh, like, legal solution is important, but I think we also have a cultural problem, and that's what I want to tackle in this video. Be mindful of how much your healthcare costs. Go into the doctor, ask them how much things cost, ask them if there are alternatives, and think critically. Like, don't pressure the doctor to give you antibiotics if the doctor tells you that you have a viral infection. Listen to your doctor and say, okay, I'm just gonna go home and wait this out. Um, yeah, by doing these things, we can keep costs down. I think this could make this individual choice could make an immense uh, difference, and then I think that would have cascading benefits 
for our society, for our economy, job creation, business, all sorts of things like that. Yeah, thank you.